You know, one thing I can't understand for the life of me, I'm, I'm trying to trying to watch Raw last night. Trying. And, you know, there was only three games on, so I thought I can, I can flip back and forth, but here's my problem. When you have a show where virtually every face, every good guy, whatever you want to call them, they're useless. And they're dumb, and they're just useless. And the bad guys control the show, whether it's Alexa for the women... Or it's it's Corbin for the guys, and and Corbin's just got this absolute power, and it's just I I don't understand, and and for some reason Drew and Lashley and and Baron have this this bromance going on, like the whole Drew McIntyre getting a medal thing, and then uh, Dolph came out, it totally seemed like guy comes out with new girlfriend, and old girlfriend comes out and makes it awkward, and it was awkward, it was really weird. Because Drew's been out without Dolph for a while now, and you would think they would have had a backstage segment or something, but nah. Or, you know, they tagged together and then Drew something, nah. I, I think part of what this this era is lacking is what is their motivation. Um, the, the motivation of the wrestlers, and I think this is where leaving the title on Brock hurts. You don't have a champ. You don't. Uh, I know Brock comes in every three months and defends it against Braun Strowman and throws him around and keeps the title and runs away. And yet, Roman won it. The reason that it was it was good Roman won it was because now we were going to start seeing the title being disputed on, on Raw, but we're not. Um, and I, I... You know, uh, WrestleTalk did an interesting video where they talked about seven things wrong with Raw and they, they speculated that losing Braun and Roman was a big part of it. Okay, but this is where not building up stars hurts you. Uh, they've had ages to build up new superstars, and they haven't. Um, and and I agree too that it, none of the matches have any merit or mean much. And they're like, oh, our, our main event tonight's going to be this, and it's like, well, I'm not sticking around for that. And it it is it is the same guys against each other every night, and I I don't understand the motivation. Like there there really isn't one, and it's it's bizarre. Because the idea that, that this, this authority figure is constantly putting bad guys in charge, this goes back almost 20 years. This whole authority figure thing has been going on for 20 years. It's repetitive, it's boring, and it's stupid. And it, it is making every single good guy on the show look completely useless. Meanwhile, on SmackDown... That's not happening. On SmackDown, it's it's seems to be run pretty well, and you've got some decent characters. and And I agree that that the whole Becky Lynch bit has helped save things too. But on SmackDown, things have been pretty well done. The only the only problem I have is that a uh, I don't think they've they've utilized Samoa Joe well enough. I don't. I think Samoa Joe should be over as a monster, and I think there should be some more with him than just what he's been. He just he hasn't been, I don't know, I, I look at what he did in TNA, I look at what he, uh, call it impact all you want, it's TNA to me, I look at what he did in TNA, I look at what he did in NXT, and then I look at him in SmackDown, and he's just kind of, meh, I, I don't, I don't, and I don't get it, and it's not him, it's the booking, so, um, you look over on, on Raw, if they were smart, they would hotshot the belt onto Elias, absolutely, and this used to happen, and when people say, oh, you don't want to just hot shot the belt like that, they used to do it all the time. This was just sort of a staple. What what WWE has become is kind of what WCW was towards the end. They're pushing storylines that don't make sense. There's too many wrestlers involved in, in these storylines. There's just alliances broken and renewed for no reason. And the women's division is, is probably the best part of the show, and yet, they don't seem to know how to book it either. It took, even on SmackDown, I've talked about SmackDown's better, it took them how many months to realize Asuka, probably the most over women's wrestler, we should give her another title shot, took them ages. And the crowd's been trying to tell them, and that's the funny thing too, people talk about the Attitude Era. The Attitude Era is the most overrated era of wrestling there is. Absolutely. But... You can take those realistic characters from the Attitude Era, where it was Stone Cold, The Rock, whatever it was, where you take a version of yourself and you amp it up. 
And then you look at the way that characters were built up before that era. So when you look back to the 80s and the way wrestlers were built up to be larger than life, if you combine that, so you've got a guy who's very realistic and gritty, but he is built up to be larger than life, you can make these feuds seem important. We should get goosebumps sometimes, once in a while. Every now and then when we see two guys in the ring together, we go, hold, oh, these, these guys have never been in the ring together. The way that it's booked now with three hours of Raw and two hours of SmackDown, that just never happens. It's like, yeah, we, we've seen Dean versus versus Seth. We, we've seen it a lot, actually, over the last few years. Yes, now Dean's the bad guy and Seth's the good guy, but we've seen it. We've done this. This was done before. So it's it's weird to me that they they keep doing this and expecting different results. And for me, I think I watched five minutes last week. I think I watched five or ten minutes this week. And I didn't miss anything. Uh, I went through the results and I watched the reviews on Wrestle Talk. I'm like, okay, I didn't miss anything. Whereas SmackDown, I made sure that I watched. There were numerous segments I made sure that I watched because it sounded like they'd be really interesting. I don't know. I don't know how you fix this, but there's there, the complaining seems to get louder. And it's too bad because it, it does tend to make it look like the wrestlers are the problem. And I'm sure that's the way that the powers that be will look at it. They'll say, oh, the ratings were down, so these wrestlers aren't engaging, so we have to switch them out of the main event and put these guys in instead. Or they'll just throw their hands in the air and go, well, it's because we don't have Roman and we never replaced Cena. I, I, I'm I, bewildered because there's all kinds of talent. There's this guy, Finn Balor. He's pretty good. He's tiny, but he's pretty good. And I think the fact that he's smaller is why he doesn't get pushed. You would think they would learn from the mistakes of WCW. Look at the guys who came over to WWE towards the end of WCW's run. They were smaller guys. They were cruiserweights. And WWE said, you know what? We're not going to make that your ceiling. That cruiserweight ceiling doesn't exist here. You can fight anybody. And we saw matchups that were just amazing. Big guys versus little guys. Now, you got 205 Live. And you take some of your best talent and you stick it on a show that nobody watches. And nobody will. Buddy Murphy is amazing. And yet, buried on 205 Live. Drew Gulak, kind of sort of amazing. Buried on 205 Live. I could go on. There are a lot of guys who are just buried on the little guy show because they're little. And I really think that holds back the rest of the product. Because again, when the show becomes obsessed with the really big guys, it the, the product suffers, the matches aren't as good. And for God's sake, can we can we ditch the wrestling hold, like the, the, the rest holds every 10 seconds? I, I get it. They don't want to see guys get burned out and they don't want to see all these moves that are dangerous. But holy crap, the rest holds are just awful. And people who watch Raw, you know what I'm talking about. The match is just starting. Yeah, this is going to be great. And then headlock. You're like, oh, oh, why is it a headlock? Oh, good. It's a test of strength. Oh, wait. No, they don't really do those anymore either. Can they not have a guy show that he's stronger than somebody else? Anyways, it's just it just feels like the matches are all plotted out exactly the same. Okay, now everybody just sit around the ring, wait for five or ten minutes, and then hit your finisher. And, and that's it. And and over on 205 Live or on NXT, the matches feel frenetic, they feel unpredictable, and they feel great. Which is why I'm terrified of NXT wrestlers being called up. Although, I'd also like to point out the NXT curse isn't really a thing. Take a look at the guys who are champs on both brands. Uh, take a look at the power figures on both brands. A lot of them have NXT roots. Um, because so many wrestlers now that are in the company are from NXT... It's easy to look at the ones that haven't moved up the card and say, oh, it's the NXT curse. But not all wrestlers are bred in NXT to be champions in WWE. Sometimes they're bred in, in NXT to be jobbers on the main roster. You just don't want to use the word jobber. We don't really say that anymore, but they're still a thing. They just hide it as well as they can, unless you're Kurt Hawkins. Let me know what you guys think in the comments section below, as always. Yeah, I'm wearing wrestling gear. I just, I, or hockey gear, not the wrestling stuff I normally wear for this. But... I'd be interested to know your thoughts on this, uh, because again, I'm 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 trying to trying to trying to enjoy this, because the the women's evolution thing I want to support that as much as I can, but it, they're making it really difficult. Uh, but I I'd, I'd be interested to know if I'm the only one in that position. Let me know your thoughts. Hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll talk to you again soon.